Hey guys, today we're talking about functions and we want to know how linear functions are used to model proportional relationships. Okay, so let's see what a function is. It's a relation in which each element of the domain is paired with exactly one element of the range. Okay, so if we look here, here's our domain and here's our range. Notice that the range contains all the values of the dependent variable and the domain is the independent variable. Okay, so this is a function because it's paired with exactly one value in the range. Okay, so make sure that you take note of that. Each domain is paired with only one in the range. Here, the domain of two is paired with one and with three. That's why it's not a function. Even though five and nine are paired with only one, because of that two, it is not a function. All right, so let's look at a few more examples. They want us to tell them whether or not each is a function and to explain why. So go ahead and pause the video, think about each one, go back and look at these notes, what makes it a function, what doesn't, and try these two problems. I'm going to go through the answers right now. So if we look at this one, the reason why this is not a function is because if you look at 54 here and here, they have two different um, ranges. And if we look at the 56 here and here, he also has two different ranges. So therefore, it is not a function. All right, even though these numbers are all jumbled, it's okay. 4 to 6, 7 to 10, 6 to 11, 3 to 8, 5 to 4, 2 to 9. If we look at this one, it is a function because each domain is paired with one of the range. Okay, so the domain is always your x and your range is always your y. We, in science, we call them these your independent variable and your dependent variable. Your x and your y up here are always your iv and your dv, okay? The independent variable is always the x and that's what determines your y value. Okay, so that's how we look at it if we have points. But what if it's already graphed for us? How do we know if something is a function? All right, I've got two parabolas here for you to look at. This one is not, or is a function, and this one is not a function. So if we look at these two, um, we see that the parabola on the left here is not a function because it actually is um, more than one point. Okay, if I look here, at this um, domain value of two, it's a negative, I don't even know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and a positive eight. But if we look over here, notice that every time we move along the x-axis, the, uh, the parabola that you see here, this, this, um, this figure, has only one value. Over here, there's more than one except at this point. Okay, so how can we test it? we do something called the vertical line test. It's a way that we can tell if a graph has, um, is a function. For example, um, let's bring him to the front. Um, where is it, where is it, order? Bring to the front, okay. So if I use this pencil, here it's only in one spot, here it's only in one spot, here it's only in one spot, here, here, and here. I'm not going over two dots with my pencil ever. So technically, even though it looks like it wouldn't be, it is a function. Here, if I look, I'm not touching um, any two spots on the line. This is a function, and it's also considered linear because it forms a line. Here, notice that when I am on x, I'm okay until I hit here. Right there, notice that there are two points. So it's not a function because every time that I hit those two points, that means that for every domain, there are two ranges. So when x is two, then my y is one and three. That is not a function. All right, so what's the rule? The function rule describes the operations performed with the input to get the range the output, right? And it can be used to write an equation that relates the variables. 
Okay, so we call this function notation. So here's the equation, y equals 2x plus 3. In function notation, we just replace the y with an fx. Okay, this represents the dependent variable. So for example, if I plugged in 4 into the equation, I would know that 2 times 4 is 8 plus 3 would give me 11. So whenever x is 4, y is 11. Thanks to the fire drill. I will be back for part two in just a second.